Okay, check out this diagram. This is courtesy of Cisco Systems. It's in their report called the Internet of Everything. Okay, so we hear the term IoT all the time, the Internet of Things, and it's rapidly evolving, though, into the Internet of Everything, right? Remember I mentioned previously that we had Verizon Cat M1 and satellite technologies for global IoT? A lot of these solutions are going to be making the everything that you find out there part of the internet with an IP version 6 address. So in this diagram, we see IOE at the center and we see four components. At the top, we see people, okay? Linking and connecting people in faster, more efficient, more relevant, more valuable ways using new technology, new initiatives and processes. Then you have process. This is giving you the right data and information to the proper authenticated and authorized person or secure system at just the right time. And then there's the things. These are the physical devices and the virtual devices that have commoditized components with IPv4 and IPv6 addresses on the internet and each other, the IoT. And then of course, data. Changing data into information and then from information into wisdom to make intelligent choices and decisions about everything connected to the internet. Here we see something we're going to see again later on in this course, but this is the system development life cycle. Okay, so we see our five phases here. For the CASP exam, you definitely have to memorize this. Phase one, initiation, okay, uh, information gathering. Phase two, development or acquisition, okay, that is acquiring the solution either from a third party or from your in-house DevOps. Then there's three, the implementation, four, the ongoing maintenance and continual operation, and then five, disposal of the service or the application once it's all done. So this policy and process lifecycle has to be managed in an iterative way where you may have to go back and redo parts of the implementation phase, okay? If there's, a, if there's a gap in your delivery or there's a security hole, it needs to be agile, okay? Regardless of the particular life cycle that you've used. So how are these initiatives affected? Well, we're gonna have new businesses, new business partners, new business solutions, new technologies. There'll be environmental changes. There'll be regulatory requirements. There'll be emerging risks and change management should be primarily involved with new hardware and software technologies, okay? new systems like your next generation IPS or your firewall identity services. Some organizations have an organizational configuration and change management. Okay? Others may break this life cycle down for your systems into multiple domains. We have to consider the proposed changes based on the new businesses and the technology and the regulations, okay? And so this should be known well advanced in the proven initiation phase. Or if we take a look at the IT risk management life cycle, as we see here, this should be part of the IT risk identification phase. So all these factors that I've talked about have to be established early on in the life cycle, okay? Now, some environmental changes you may not be able to forecast those or predict those, okay? In some dynamic and growing organizations, change in configuration management is a moving target, and it presents challenges to us as security practitioners and security engineers. Also, systems should include facilities and physical security controls, also diagrams and drawings and blueprints. You'll have business management systems like BMS, uh, there'll be HVAC systems, there'll be SCADA systems. So we're not just talking about systems in the sense of delivering email or delivering web services. We're talking comprehensive services throughout the enterprise. Also, do both internal and external parties manage and maintain these systems? Okay, if you think about the Stuxnet virus, you know, that was how Stuxnet got into the Iranian nuclear facility, okay? It was on a vendor's air-gapped laptop. So it was, it was a physical security issue, not a network security issue initially.